All right, so on the last day of class, what we need to work with is uh, we have products, and what further we can do is set up more advanced products regarding variations um, and uh, coupons. Coupons is a little easier to talk about, so I'll start with that, and then we'll um, look at variations. So I'm in the dashboard, and if I go over to, if I hover over products, there's a spot there for coupons. I can click on that. There aren't any at the moment, so at the top, under coupons, I can add a coupon. And the way coupons work is you have this control about what's the keyword, what's the code word that you can use. Uh, you've seen these before. You go to some other online website, and at the checkout uh, checkout screen, you input some sort of code, and you get some sort of discount. So um, we see here coupon code. The code entered to receive the discount. What's the discount amount? Discount type. Uh, the, I, I would like that they would flip this over to have what's the discount type, and then the discount, because people always say, well, 12, 12 what? Is it a fixed amount? Is it percent or shipping? So I wish they would flip those over. But here, if I do fixed amount, then it's going to be a $12 discount. If I have that, then if I, if I then change that to percent, it'll be 12% discount on what you're trying to buy. The coupon code itself, this is, for example, it's some sort of code like save12. Again, whatever name, whatever short keyword is your keyword in order to uh, activate the, the discount. That's the coupon code. What's the discount in its type? Start and end. This is optional, and it says if dates, date fields are left empty, there will be no expiration on this coupon. You have to decide this. You have to decide, um, I'm going to have this sale using this coupon, and will it go continuously? Can someone still use this coupon? It got in their inbox, but they didn't use it until three months later. Do you want that? Yes or no? You have a starting and ending dates that you can set up here. If you don't put anything, the coupon will work forever. You can deactivate it or activate it whenever you want. And so I'm going to leave those empty, but I could easily put dates. Let's say it works only for one weekend. So I have some sort of email subscription list. I send people an email and say, this weekend only, use this coupon code, and I put the dates of the weekend. The coupon will become activated. This is the default. If I don't want the coupon active right away, I can change the dates and turn that off. Use once, deactivate coupon after it has been used. This will keep track of who's used the coupon, and if they've used it once, then it'll deactivate it and they can't use it again. So that'll be up to you to decide, but Perhaps I want to turn that on. I don't want the same person to use the same discount over and over. We can ap apply this to all the products, meaning act, meaning set it to set it to all the products in your in your cart in your checkout screen or not, or apply it to specific products. One product gets a discount and the other ones don't. If it's off, that's what ha that's what happens. If you turn it on, then that percentage will be discounted for all the products you're buying. Again, that's up to you to decide how you want to do that. Usually, the coupon applies to everything. Uh, if it's a percentage, if it's if it's just a fixed amount, it really doesn't matter if that's on or off because it'll be twelve dollars off, no matter if you're buying something that costs thirteen dollars or thirty dollars. It'll take it away from your total amount. And then you can get even more detailed. There's more conditions here that you can set up. This can be pretty detailed and complex. Notice we can add these rules. So we have item name, item quantity, total quantity, subtotal. With total quantity or subtotal amount, you can uh, put some parameters here about how much are you spending before this works. I can then do is equal to, is greater than, contains, etc. So it can be kind of complex. I'm going to say is greater than. You know, if you're spending more than $52, then this coupon applies. This prevents people from using your coupon 
when you're on, when they're only trying to buy like a five dollar thing and you get twelve dollars off. Well, you're gonna save money by spending money. That old trick. So the more that they spend, then they can use the coupon, and then you'll probably come out ahead. You can add more. You can add less. I'll add the coupon. So I've got my save 12 coupon. 12% 12 discount. Uh, it's currently active right now. I'll be able to go back and edit it to change it. I can deactivate it so that sales over. You can no longer use that coupon and whenever you want. You can activate it again. So very straightforward. Now um, you can add as many as you want here, of course. Have them active, have them not active. It's up to you then to spread the message of that coupon. Are you going to share it on Twitter? Are you going to do it on a blog post? Are you going to, um, you know, share it on on your email distribution list or whatever marketing system you have? Uh, then it's up to you to decide uh, how you manage it. And this one that comes with WP Commerce is, is nice. If you want even more detail and power, there's probably plenty of other plugins out there that um, you can further add to it. Now, a little bit of inside information. One of the clients that we have, um, he doesn't use coupons at all because it depends on the kind of audience that you're trying to get um, he um, has had the experience where coupons bring in people, but sometimes those people are not that serious. They just want to use that coupon, and that's it. They don't stick around. They don't buy anything more. You don't know these things unless you try it. You don't know depending on your product, your demographics, all of that. It's very easy to try and set these up, but remember to deactivate them when you're done or they're going to keep being used. So coupons pretty straightforward. You create them, you spread them out, and then you use them. Any questions on coupons? Okay, let's talk about variations. I'm going to briefly look at the, sh at the shop again. If I go over to bakery store, A birthday. Yes. Well, that's what I said earlier. You need to spread that message oh, out. You need to tweet about it, or you need to put it on an email or something. When uh, they're in the checkout lane or the checkout screen, depending on the product, that product then will have a little box for you to apply that coupon to that product. For most of us, I would think we would apply it to the whole purchase, so it's a good idea to turn that on. With, um, with variations, if we look at our current uh, product, and look at this, it remembered that I had this in my cart from a week ago. Um, that's pretty smart. But anyway, I've got birthday cake giant cookie, pecan pie. These are a few products that I have here. And if you're going to buy a birthday cake, you're probably going to buy one. If you're going to buy a pecan pie, you'll buy one. Giant cookie, I hope you buy one. They're really big. But let's say you wanted to buy a different kind of product. Let's say I wanted to buy, um, I, let's say I sell snickerdoodles, which are like fancy sugar cookies. And I want to sell snickerdoodles in groups of six, or 12, a dozen, or half a dozen, or a quarter dozen, or two dozen. I want to sell them in batches, six at a time, 12 at a time. I don't want the person to, to select over here. Uh, I want seven snickerdoodles. No, I want them to be sold as six, 12, or 24, whatever, in batches. So that's where variations come in. I need to create these variations, these groups of products. We'll have snickerdoodle, and we'll have choose three of them, six of them, or 12 of them. Think about it in these terms. What about if you have a clothing store, and you're going to sell shirts, large, medium, and small? 
you have a shirt with a design, and then you need them in different sizes. Same design, different sizes. Large, medium, and small. Those are variations as well. So you can use variations in a variety of ways. One of the clients that we have, the variations are used there for combos, the food combos. I would like to buy a combo that has this, this, and this. And so it calculates it all, and they're variations. So we need to deal with that conceptually. I think the first time you deal with variations, they're a little weird, but then once you've set it up, they make sense. And this is the same for WP Commerce and WooCommerce, all of them. Variations are always tricky because we have to account for the possibilities. So I'll show you a simple example, then a more complex example later. We'll see it can get pretty complex because this is like, what do you call that in, in mathematics? When you multiply something by something by something factorial or something, it just keeps multiplying because if you have three possibilities of shirts, plus three possibilities of colors, plus the two possibilities, or three possibilities of um, male, female, child. That's three times three times three. That's nine. That's nine different products coming from one product. So these multiplications add up. Internally it works, but you just have to understand how it works. Here's what we need to do. Under the products, let's go to variations. And we can create variations at the moment we're creating products, but I recommend to create variations first and then apply them to products. Variations allow you to create options for your products. Example, t-shirts will have a size option. Uh, you can create this as a variation. Size will be the variation set name, and it will be a new variant set. We will then create variants, which are small, medium, and large, which will have the variation set of size. Once you have made your set, you can then use the table at the right to manage them, and you can order them in the variation set. So we've got variation sets, and we've got variants. A variation set is size, and the variants are small, medium, large. That's one of the things we have to figure out here first. Once we create various sets, remember, a set is like a size, a color, a shape, etc. Those are variation sets. Once we've uh, created at least one variation set, we can then add variants to them. We'll see how that works here. But let's say I'm thinking about selling snickerdoodles in sets or batches of three, six, nine, whatever. So we could create a variation set here called, um, you know, snickerdoodles. And then add to it three snickerdoodles, six snickerdoodles, 12 snickerdoodles. That could work. But the power of using variations is that you can reuse them. This variation, if we create it like this, would only apply to snickerdoodles. But I might want to sell snickerdoodles in batches, and cookies in batches, and uh, I mean chocolate chip cookies in batches. Maybe I'm selling um, donuts in batches, cupcakes. I want to sell three, six, or twelve cupcakes. I want to sell three, six, or twelve um, uh, chocolate chip cookies, three, six, or twelve donuts. So what I'm getting at here is try to think of some sort of variation set that is generic enough, depending on your product, to make sense for more than one product. And I've already said some keywords subtly. What sort of keywords could we use for to delineate a group of multiple things, multiple baked goods? What's that? Nope. General. General. Okay. Generic. Batches, a batch of cookies, a batch of donuts, a batch of etc. And so perhaps batches or a bundle or something like that. So I'm going to call this batch. I can select batch. The, the store will look like it'll have the cookie and it'll have a little box that says batch and select 3612. That's my batch. I can apply batch to snickerdoodles, to chocolate chip cookies, to cupcakes, etc. Description. 
I'll leave, I don't have to put anything at the moment. I don't believe my template shows it. Variation price. This is a default price. Um, we can do it in regular prices, differential, which is plus or minus, and percentage. We'll leave this one alone for the moment because uh, we're going to say, we're going to create a very variance in a moment. So the only thing I changed here really was the name. Let's type batch and click add new variation. If you scroll back up, then uh, we've got a batch. This is my basic unit. Now, if you select parent, select batch, be very careful here. People, people uh, do this accidentally. Create the batch, and then make sure you've selected parent batch. And again, I'm going to sell three cookies, six cookies, 12 cookies. So if I were to write, for example, three cookies. Don't do this, but if I was if I were to add three cookies, then I would have a batch of three cookies. Then I can add another one. Six cookies. Batch of six cookies. And it's appropriate price. Then twelve cookies. A batch of twelve cookies and its appropriate price on the next screen. Again, about limiting yourself. This will only apply to cookies. I also want to sell batches of donuts. I want to sell batches of cupcakes. I want to sell batches of donut holes. So three cookies wouldn't work. This can be anything we want, but I'm going to say one dozen, which is 12. So I can sell 12 cookies at a time, 12 cake, uh, uh, donut holes at a time, etc. Um, don't worry about price here, we'll add it on the next screen. Add new. So now this says, okay, one dozen is one of the selectable items of batch. Let's say I want to do half a dozen. So I can write one half dozen. Add. Now the batch bo drop box will say that half a dozen is selectable. Six of whatever. Uh, so I'm going to sell six at a time, 12 at a time. Mm, what about three at a time? What would that be? One quarter dozen. Add that. So now the possibilities of our snickerdoodles, of our chocolate chip cookies, they could be bought in one dozen, 12 dozen, or one one dozen, one half dozen, or one quarter dozen batches. We'll set the price and other details uh, when we attach these to the product. So you see the, the process. Um, we would create these variation sets and then we apply them to the product. I'm going to go back over now to products. So we've got birthday cake, giant cookie, pecan pie. I want to add a new product. So at the top you can click add new. This is going to be our snickerdoodle product, our snickerdoodle cookie. We'll skip most of the things here, but then on the right side, product pricing, at least a basic price. Um, there could be a, a quirk or a glitch at any particular moment. I've seen it at least once on a real client's site that there was a glitch when the person did not select a batch, the product was suddenly being sold for free because no price was put there as a base. Now they fix that the WP Commerce plugin has been fixed. I haven't seen it on a real client. But also, just to be safe, you should have some sort of base price there in case the batch or in case the variation doesn't work. So let's say the very minimal, I'm going to be selling the three snickerdoodles at the least. 
So, I don't know, we'll sell that for three dollars. Three cookies, three dollars, I don't know if that's too much, too little, I don't know. But three dollars for three cookies, most basic price. Well, the point of doing variations is now we can use this box. Variations. It's about product delivery. Variations. All that, all, uh, all particular, um, all particular um, variation sets that have been created will be listed right there. You can click the little triangle to show what's further attached. We can create variations at this moment, but I find it a little bit cumbersome at this point. And so that's why I recommend create the variation sets first. And if I activate the little batch box, it's going to activate that you can buy one dozen, one half dozen, one quarter dozen of that product. So logically, if I only want to sell one dozen and one half dozen, I only need to select one dozen and one half dozen. I want to. I want all of those possibilities to be purchasable. Click generate variations. Notice there was a setup tab and there was a manage tab. So since we've since we've set up the variations, now we can manage them. And here's the part about the pricing. We have a base price of three dollars, and then here we can fine tune how much these costs, even sale prices and stock amount, SKUs, and taxable amount. So one quarter dozen, which is three cookies, I'll set that one to three. Notice also if you hover over here, you can go back to edit that original one, edit its shipping, mark it as draft to remove it, I suppose. Half a dozen, let's say, um, again, spend, I mean, uh, spend more, save more. So we'll entice people. Okay, if you're going to buy Three of them, it's going to cost you $3. But if you spend $5, you'll get six of them. But if you spend $10, you'll get 12 of them. Whatever price you want to use here. These might not be really good business savvy prices. I'm just throwing some prices out there. And so this is going to entice people, possibly, to spend more, to save more. You know, if I just buy a little bit more, I'm going to save a little bit. But never mind that you're spending more, that they're spending more. Save those variations. We don't need to change anything else at the moment. I'm going to publish this product and then go look at it in my store. Go ahead and publish it. Visit site. If it worked, we'll do another one. Let's go visit site. Bakery, let's see, birthday cake, sharing cookie, snickerdoodle. Snickerdoodle, product options, batch, please select. Now, I sh it should not let me add to cart. See that? It should not let me add to cart without making a selection. But as I said a few years ago, there was a glitch, and it was letting people add to cart for zero price. But now I see one dozen one half and one quarter. If I select one quarter dozen, it tells me that's going to be three dollars. One dozen, ten dollars. Before selecting, before selecting anything, it says price from three dollars. So your lowest priced variation uh, variant will will be shown there. I would obviously write in the description. We skipped the description, but I would write in the description about the cookie itself and the batches, and you know, uh, buy half a dozen for this price and save with one dozen, etc. I can uh, add it to the cart now. That's valid, 
And I'll see at the bottom, I'll see in my footer, it added it there, one half dozen. And you can either check out or, or um, continue shopping. We'll do another variation in a moment, but does that make sense? Any questions? So I'm buying the one half dozen variation of the Snickerdoodle. I'm going to go back to, well, actually, if you're in the dash, if you're in the front end visit site, remember we have the quick new button? I want to make another product. I'll make a new product, and this time, let's say I'm selling, um, chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate chip mint cookies. I need to set a base price. Oh, I forgot category here. Um, product category, cookies. Base price, this can be whatever you want, of course. Let's say they're also going to be three dollars. Let's say three fifty. The mint is expensive, so we'll have a base price under the setup. This time, maybe I want only one dozen and twelve, or half a dozen. I mean, one dozen and one or one half dozen. I I can simply select the ones I want to use. Generate variations. So now I only have one dozen and one half dozen to work with. My base price, uh, I guess I did 350, which might be way too affordable. And then one. Well, actually, no. That was the that was this 351. If it fails, it would be at 350. So that price really will never be seen. Uh, so I should set this a little more sensibly. Uh, let's say six dollars. And then again, to entice people to splurge, I'll go to eleven dollars. Save a whole dollar. Save that variation, publish it, and if I visit my shop, now I will have chocolate chip mint cookies, price from six dollars, options are batch, dozen, add to cart, we'll get a little more complex with variations, but any questions so far? create some variations perhaps a little more complexly so again uh, you can create a variation while you're creating the product but I like to go over to the variation screen to focus so let's go back to variations and let's say I want to sell we don't have a category for it but let's say donuts 
I want to sell donuts. We can sell the donuts uh, in sugar-free and regular. That'll be one variation. Sugar-free donuts, regular donuts. Then what I also want to do is uh, sell them plain or frosted. That's another variation. And um, maybe one more will do uh, regular size or jumbo sized. So that's another variation. So I had said uh, sugar free or conventional. I had said uh, frosted, I'm just making notes, frosted or non, and regular or big. So we need then those those six things that I just said, those were variants. We need to make variation sets. Each of those three is a different sort of concept, isn't it? Uh, Sugar-free or not, frosted or not, regular or big. Different concepts. So we need to think of a name, a variation set for each of those things. Again, if it makes sense, we might want to choose some sort of generic name that can be applied to many kinds of products. I'm going to perhaps only focus on donuts at this point, so it might be okay that I call these variation sets specifically donut-related things. But I'm thinking sugar-free or conventional. So we'll say, um, what would be like a generic name for that? Sugar-free or conventional? It's like donut style or sweetened by or sweetener. It's a way we can say that. Um, well, what if we call it... Hmm. Sweetener. I'll add that new as a variation set. Sweetener. Because then I will do sugar-free. Making sure that sugar-free is a child of sweetener. Or else you're going to create a bunch of new sets. It's very easy to to, to do wrong if you're not if you're not paying attention. I created the sweetener set so the sugar free uh, as part of the sugar free is a child of the sweetener parent. So we'll add that. I guess as I think about it, perhaps people will think, okay, sweetener, do you mean sugar? Do you mean agave syrup? Do you mean uh, stevia? Whatever. That can all be changed, of course. Let's just go on with this concept. So, sweetener again. Um, so we've got sugar-free. We've got uh, regular sugar. And uh, that should have been added again to the sweetener parent. Sugar-free, regular sugar. Uh, we'll do one more. Brown sugar. So there will be a little drop-down box for the sweetener selection. Next, I want to have the variation of frosted or not. So under parent, this is a new variation set. Be careful here that now you don't add this to the new, uh, to the old variation set. This is a new variation set and we'll call this frosting. New variation set called frosting. So we get a new item here, frosting. Make sure you switch the parent over to frosting. And now the child will be um, classic frosting. And the other one will be no frosting.
All of these prices, remember, we set them later, even though there's a sp spot for them down here. Usually you'll be doing this per product. So one possibility for them to choose when they buy these donuts is um, frosting or no frosting. And one more, just to see what it looks like, size. So new variation set of size. And that variation, we have a new one, size. Let's say regular. Let's say, oops. So I made that mistake. I didn't set the parent as size. Notice then you can easily hover over and delete. I guess you might be able to edit it and put it down there. You can easily delete it. I didn't mean that to be a brand new variation set. I meant regular to be a child of size. And the other one is jumbo. So under size, the person can choose jumbo donuts, regular size donuts. Notice also from this screen, you can see the uh, on the rightmost column, you can see what has been used, what has been applied to that variation. Two items under half dozen, but only one item under quarter dozen. And uh, these are clickable, so when you click there, it'll show you a list. Of what uh, of what has been applied that way, and this is further editable, quick editable also. So if you need to go back and make these uh, quick changes, but anyway, I've created a, a new uh, a, an, another variety of items. I've got fourteen of them now. You may have more or less. That's okay. But I've created more variation sets. So now I need to add a new product. This will be donuts. <coughs> I don't have a category of donuts, but remember I can quickly create one here. Under product categories, I can click plus, add new product category, call this donuts, and then add new product category button. <coughs> I've got a new product category of donuts. <coughs> Under my variations, I wanted sweetener size and frosting. Notice I could also add batch. How many donuts do I want to sell? For the moment I'll just do frosting, size, and sweetener. Generate variations. This time it's taking a little bit longer to process that because I've got 12 possible products. 2 times 2 times 3. Two items of size, two items of frosting, three items of sweetener. 2 times 2 times 3. That's 12. I've got 12 possible products, therefore 12 possible prices. This is what I'm saying about the complexity. With that client, with those combo meals, it can easily have something like 70 variations. And all of these prices have to be dealt with when there's an increase. 
like the increase in the minimum wage that increases everything like two cents or something. So you have to go in and change all those prices. And yeah, I have to go in and look at all these boxes I need to edit. However, it doesn't apply at this point here. But if I do, if I did need to edit many prices at once, I could select all prices or as many as I as I wanted. And then at the top here, bulk actions, I could say edit them all. Edit all the ones that I have selected at once. And so if all the prices were the same, I can go there. All of these will get the exact same price. It doesn't apply here, perhaps. But as that example from that client, there's all of these variations. This product with that product with this variation with that. And there's a lot that we need to change when the price changes. So this is a real time saver. I'm going to take that back. And for us, this can be anything, but for us, because I have all of these possibilities, frosting size and sweetener, if I wanted to, I could really fine-tune this, because we have brown sugar, classic frosting, jumbo, brown sugar, classic frosting, regular, brown sugar, jumbo, no frosting, brown sugar, no frosting, regular. So I could say all the ones that are using... Um, the regular sugar will have a certain uh, a certain price. All the ones that are jumbo have a different price. So let's say these uh, these three ones with brown sugar, maybe that one's more expensive. So I'm only selling these in in, in a dozen batch, let's say, which I would write in the description. So I'm going to say $12 for all of these that have brown sugar. The classic frosting ones, 11. The jumbo ones, because they're big and they need more dough, then we'll sell them for $13. The ones with no frosting, we need less ingredients, so $10. Whatever, I'm just picking a bunch of prices, save those variations. Publish the product. And then I'll visit the shop. Now, uh, we had a setting that we did earlier about how many products to show at a time before we get next page. Mine is showing up here. There's a new page. But I've got uh, birthday cakes, chocolate, donuts, and snickerdoodle has been pushed to second page because I only put four at a time. I've got five products. Previous, next, but anyway, here we go with donuts. Now look at all these possibilities. So with frosting. And down here, price from ten dollars. So let's say I'm going to select the classic frosting, and I and I can't proceed until until I've made all the possible choices here. I'm going to do classic frosting, regular sized, with uh, regular sugar, $11. Instead of classic frosting, no frosting, $10. No frosting, sugar-free, $10. And if I make that jumbo, $13.
right? So that's variations. Depending how complex you get, it could be difficult to work with or not. Uh, it's up to you, of course, how many variations to add. We did a very basic one, then we did a complex one. Many variations. I had 12 different products to deal with with prices. The more of these that you add to it, the more complexity you have. I'm going to take a break in a moment, but any questions at this point? Okay, it's about uh, 7.06. We'll take a break until 7.16. When we come back, we need to uh, deal with better organization of our, of our, of our store. We'll be back at 716.